Yeah. <laughs> we know what testosterone is. What is testosterone deficiency? So testosterone deficiency is uh, commonly known as low T hypogonadism. And this is a syndrome, which means that it isn't just a lab test showing a low testosterone level. It is the existence of a low testosterone level on testing combined with clinical symptoms. So I have met many patients, as have you, that may have low or even significantly low you know, testosterone levels, but they feel fine. They don't really have any systemic issues whenever you ask them about loss of sex drive, uh, loss of uh, energy, erectile dysfunction, et cetera, et cetera. They don't cite anything. And those men, despite having low testosterone levels, do not have the condition of hypogonadism. But when you have men who are experiencing fatigue, loss of sex drive, erectile dysfunction, fat gain, muscle loss, in addition to measurably low testosterone levels, that creates the clinical syndrome that is hypogonadism or testosterone deficiency. Yeah, and it's interesting because then you can have the opposite with guys who have all the symptoms and then you check labs and they don't have low testosterone on labs too. Hormones are very complicated. Exactly, and you know there are a lot of things in life that can cause fatigue. And in, uh, in a lot of consultations, I'll have guys who come in with you know, all the symptoms of low T, but they've got normal numbers. They're like, doc, you know, why, are, why am I so tired? And I'm, I tell them, I'm like, listen, there are a million different things. I have two small kids that don't let me sleep and that's what makes me tired. You know, even mm -hmm. though you know, I'm a testosterone patient on testosterone, I know my levels are fine, but it doesn't matter. You gotta think about other things like uh, not just sleep, quality of sleep, exercise, all these other things that contribute to energy. Very important, yeah. Yep. Um, so when should men, you know, think about getting screened for low testosterone? You know, that's an interesting question. I really think that it is wise to get tested for low testosterone um, whenever you are experiencing those symptoms, all right, which can happen at any age, all right? It's totally reasonable to get checked. Um, and I think that it is also reasonable for younger men that maybe they feel fine, they just wanna have an idea of where they are. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of guys who approach me, you know, out uh, in my personal life, like, hey, when should I get tested? I was like, if you wanna get tested now just to know you're at, that's totally fine, that you don't have to do anything with that, but it's information. Um, patients that I think really should make it a priority to get screened are men that are over the age of 40 that are starting to experience those symptoms though, okay? Or they have a specific risk factor. Like let's say they are diabetic. Um, they have uh, a history of opioid use, metabolic disorders, uh, transplant patients. These are all people that have an elevated risk for hypogonadism. And we know they do much better whenever their testosterone is at a normal level. So they have a really uh, strong case to benefit from testosterone therapy. Yeah. And what labs are you typically ordering then? Sure. Well, you know, obviously uh, we're pretty comprehensive, you know, here at our clinic and we probably get more labs than what most places do. But the bare minimum screening uh, that you need to get is two early morning testosterone levels. And the reason why timing matters is because testosterone is secreted on what's called a circadian rhythm or follows a diurnal pattern. And so this means that it changes with the hour of the day. So testosterone levels really need to be drawn before maybe 11 a.m. noon because it, testosterone levels will drop later in the afternoon. Now, that response of that dropping in the afternoon tends to be blunted in older men, so mm -hmm. it really doesn't make as big of a difference. But for our younger patients, they're almost universally going to have low testosterone levels in the afternoon, and that's normal and actually healthy. So we have to look at what it happens first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, other things that I do think are worth mentioning, uh, I think it's helpful to check estrogen levels. Uh, hematocrit, we check gonadotropins, FSH, LH. We'll also screen with a prolactin to rule out the presence of some sort of benign growth that may be affecting testosterone levels. Um, and, you know, really it can go on from there. Some places will do a, you know, comprehensive metabolic workup in addition to testosterone levels. So, um, the but the bare minimum is getting those two early morning testosterone draws. Mm -hmm. Um, and so different types of labs, you know, you have your total testosterone and free testosterone. So what's the difference there? Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny because biologically, like the only testosterone that actually matters is free testosterone. Yet 
we don't routinely use that for screening. And that's actually uh, a bit of a flaw in the published scientific data. Because if you look at it, what happens to testosterone in the body is that the majority of testosterone, maybe 98% of it, is actually bound by two proteins, uh, sex hormone binding globulin primarily, and then to a lesser extent, uh, albumin. And whenever testosterone is bound to protein, it can't be metabolically active. It's not free to bind to the androgen receptor and exert its you know, terminal effect, which is you know, changing you know, transcription of proteins you know, in, the, in the cell nucleus. So uh, in reality, it's that free testosterone that matters. But no one can really agree on the best way to measure free mm -hmm. testosterone. Um, the gold standard is this really complex test called equilibrium dialysis, which nobody actually does in clinical practice because it's so challenging to do and very time consuming. And so most people will use a calculated free testosterone. But when all of the original studies were done trying to establish the thresholds for low testosterone and average testosterone levels across the population, that wasn't done, right? It's more expensive to do that. So everything was measured against total testosterone. So we don't really have established really good thresholds for free testosterone. Mm -hmm. I, many have been proposed and there's a lot of uh, data that you can find that may support one versus another, but the majority of the thresholds that are in guidelines are all based on total testosterone. So in our clinic, we will gather both total testosterone and free testosterone because at least in our clinical opinion, we believe free testosterone can be a useful differentiator whenever men are kind of at that borderline, like let's say a testosterone of like, you know, 420, something like that, but they still have significant symptoms. If they've got a low free T, that's probably someone that would benefit from testosterone therapy. Yeah. <clears throat> These are always interesting conversations to have with other providers too. Yeah. I think, you know, talking about total and free and sex hormone binding globulin and things that can change that and bind more testosterone and everything. So um, change and in practice, it's kind yeah. of difficult to know how to, um, how to take that or how much weight to put on one versus another. And it's yeah. in the end, it's just not perfect, which very few things in medicine are perfect. So. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's helpful to like be honest with patients about mm -hmm. that, oh, like, yeah. and just you know tell them say, hey, you've got a lot of symptoms that are consistent with low testosterone, but really like your total testosterone isn't adding up, and your free, although it may be low, let's say by percentage, okay, mm -hmm. your total testosterone is like eight fifty, man. Like I, I feel pretty confident that testosterone is not the reason you're tired, okay? Maybe, 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 <laughs> right? You it's know. interesting, like scenario where you can see uh, kind of a low testosterone too. I, or low free testosterone, a recent patient who had undergone chemotherapy and mm -hmm. you know maybe that can have some effects on the liver and change sex hormone binding globulin and that free testosterone. Um, so there are certain scenarios, but it's that's not your typical everyday low no. testosterone patient that you're seeing. Yeah, yeah, and you know, again, you know, there's a reason why we have to get two measurements. You know, mm -hmm. I, uh, I think I told you the story recently where I had a supremely healthy young 17 year old, you know, kid coming in mm -hmm. with a scary low total testosterone of like 90. I look at him, and you know, the kid is in fantastic shape. He's just jacked out of his mind, and you know, he's talking about hitting all of these plateaus in the gym, and you know, he's just tired, and you know, he denied any you know prior uh, anabolic use, never used SARMs or anything like that. And you know, my suspicion is like, I just think this kid is overtraining, and so gave him a week off, and uh, which was a very painful week for him. <laughs> and then you know, he comes back with a repeat set of labs, and he's stone cold normal. And yeah. The truth was is that you know he wasn't giving his body time to rest and that's why he was feeling so daggum drained and yeah. once we got him set up with something that was a little bit more reasonable he started to actually progress and feel much better yeah and that's an interesting one i've never seen that firsthand in a patient yeah. and you know it's always so many things in life are a balance because we talk about exercise being beneficial for testosterone too but anything that's done too much maybe 